Okay, so welcome everybody to tonight's webinar. As you can see tonight, we're talking about goals and attitude. Um, this is one of a series of eight webinars that I run. I try to run one every Wednesday. Um, normally it takes maybe nine or ten weeks to do the whole lot because there's always the odd, the odd week when I'm away or can't make it for some reason. Um, but they're all recorded, so if, like Rose, you've only just started, you don't have to wait two or three weeks to, to, to see the ones about getting started. If, if you wanted to watch them earlier, I'll show you at the end where all of the recordings are. Um, but basically, uh, the way they go is the first three, number one, two, and three, are all about the retail side of the business, really getting started, things to do in your first few weeks, and then building that customer base. Then four and five are about building the residual income side of the business, building a team and supporting your new team members. And then six, seven, and eight that we're in in a moment are those kind of personal development skills, you know, the skills that will take you from, once you've learned the basic skills of posting on Facebook, delivering catalogs, delivering your orders, starting and supporting people, what else do you need to build a large and successful business? And that's what six, seven, and eight are about. Are about. So tonight, goals and attitude. What we're going to be covering is, is your attitude important? Does it matter? Well, hopefully you'll agree with me that it does, and I'm going to suggest a few ways how you can work on it just to, to think about it. Usually just being aware of the, the importance it is makes a big difference. And then the other thing that I want to talk about this evening are goals and how to set and achieve goals. So are goals important? Um, if you agree with me that they are, I just want to give you a little kind of uh, introduction, really. It certainly won't give you a lot of great detail. That's something you should work on with your, with your sponsor, with your upline. Um, but how to set and achieve goals, which is really exciting when you get into a regular routine of doing that. So, your attitude, is it important? Well, hopefully you'll agree with me that it is. And the reason, if you think about it, every distributor, when they join this business, has exactly the same opportunity. We've all got the same catalogues. We've all got the same products. We've all got the same costs and overheads. We've all got the same payment plan and bonuses. So if everything is the same, why are some people more successful than others? And I would argue that the reason that some people are more successful than others is all to do with their attitude. Just to give you a bit of an example, how do you feel when you get up in the morning? You might wake up and think, oh, you know what, I'm going to get those catalogs out, whatever it takes. I don't care if it's raining, if it's frosty, I'll wrap up well. I said I was going to get them out, so I will. Or you might think, oh, I don't really feel like going out in that cold weather. Maybe I'll put them out tomorrow instead. And it's the same person, but it just kind of depends on what your attitude is to this business. And what I would say is that successful people do what they know they should do, even when they don't feel like doing it. So don't just sort of think, oh, well, I don't feel like it, I'll do it another day. Just do it anyway, and that's a, a, a route to success. Your attitude makes such a big difference, because if you think about it, having a great attitude helps you to put those catalogs out, even if you're feeling a little bit down, as I said earlier. And as, you, as you're out delivering to your customers, delivering orders, it encourages, well, encourages you to chat with your customers and smile, even if you're feeling a bit down yourself. You, know, you don't let that reflect on your, you know, badly to your customers. And being reliable with your customers and being cheerful and chatting with them helps you to build really great rapport with your customers. And that's really important because that helps you to build a strong, and loyal customer base and that strong loyal customer base will provide you with a good steady income from your personal retail and that really starts off with you just having a good attitude equally if you think about the team building side of the business having a great attitude you know I'm going to go and get these leaflets out whatever the weather even if I'm feeling a bit under the weather it encourages you to make those follow-up calls if you're feeling a bit nervous especially if you're new in the business and you're not sure what to say and maybe you had a chat with your sponsor and they explain what to say. Maybe they've showed you, shown you a few times how to do it. You're always nervous. Everybody's nervous. It's a bit like an actor going on stage. If you're not feeling nervous, you're probably not doing it right. So having a good attitude, a can-do attitude, will encourage you to make those calls, even if you're feeling a bit nervous. 
and those extra activities that will bring you in an extra team member this month will be done because you're saying, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to get the lead generating done. I'm going to get my adverts out on Facebook. I'm going to make those calls. If you've got an extra team member just because of what you've done, then the bigger your team, again, the bigger that income, especially the residual income from building a team. So just in summary, having a great attitude can make a big difference. It can increase your weekly orders. If you consistently put your catalogs out and you're cheerful to your customers regularly, that could easily make a difference from £250 in orders a week if you're feeling a bit grumpy all the time and hardly putting your catalogs out when you should be, to 500 a week. It could increase your team orders because if you duplicate your attitude with your team members and you're building more and more teams, bringing more and more people into your team, your team orders could increase from 2000 to 4000 a week. And all of that increases your income. And that can make a big difference between you know, whether you're in £50 a week to, to £500 a week. So your attitude makes a big difference to the success of this business. So if you agree that having a positive can-do attitude helps, how do you get it? Now, you can guess that you probably can't go into a shop like Sainsbury's or Tesco's and buy a tin of it or a bottle of it. You kind of have to do something about it. So I've got a couple of suggestions for ways to work on your attitude. If you sometimes struggle to kind of you know, get up in the morning and do what you need to do or do the work after, after a long day's work, you come home, you know you should get your catalogs out, but you're kind of not sure that you feel like it. There's a couple of ways that you can help. So one is your life philosophies. Now, I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail in webinar eight, which is next week. But just a couple of examples. If you blame other people for things going on in your life, then it's really difficult to change anything about it. For example, if, you're, if your boss at work won't give you a pay rise and you just blame your boss for it, then there's not much you can do about that. It's your boss's fault. Until he changes his mind, you're not going to get a pay rise. However, if instead of blaming your boss, you say, right, I'm going to go on an evening class, I'm going to get my extra qualifications, I'm going to ask my boss what do I need to do to, to get promoted, you're then taking control of it. And if you're taking control, you can do as much as you want to about that. So blame is one thing that I think you should really wipe out of your life. And the other good thing, uh, the other thing you can do, if you've got the philosophy of, um, and this is one of my favorite ones, it's not that your success isn't the one or two major decisions that you make in your life. It's the good decisions that you make every day. So if that decision is, I'm going to put my catalogs out or I'm going to make those follow-up calls, if you do that every day, if your philosophy is, I'm going to do what I need to do regardless of whether, you know, whether I feel like doing it or not, then again, that, that's a fantastic philosophy to have. So don't worry if you're kind of a little bit unsure as to what I'm going on about there. I'll explain that in more detail next week. But the other thing that really does make a big difference to your attitude is success. If you're feeling successful and you're enjoying what you're doing and you're seeing progress and your income is growing, then that's just fantastic. That, you know, that just, that's a great way to build a positive attitude. And what is success? Well, I guess it's different for everybody, isn't it? Because for some people, success would be earning a thousand pounds in a month. For other people, it might just be paying the bills while still having time to, to go and watch the, your kiddies school play. It, success is different for everybody. But one of the things that I would like to talk to you a little bit about this evening is that I believe success is achieving your goals. And that can be different for everybody. So what I'm going to do is try and give you a little, a little bit of a, a heads up, if you like, a, a getting started plan for setting and achieving goals. Because if you can constantly set and achieve goals, it's a guaranteed route to success because you can, whatever your goals are now, when you achieve them, you'll set more exciting goals, more demanding goals, more exciting goals mean you kind of, you're really being successful at whatever you choose to do. So there's a little step-by-step -step approach that I'm going to go through really quickly with you this evening. So firstly, you need to understand what goals are important to you. So your sponsor might say to you, it's really important that you get to 10% or 13% or get to gold or become bronze exec. Now that might be important to them, 
but it may not be important to you. So it's really important that you know why you're in this business and what you're trying to achieve from it. I've said there, what is your reason why? And then I'm going to talk a little bit about setting your first goals and then a bit about achieving those first goals. And what you need to be prepared for is that this business is a little bit of a roller coaster. You will have good days and bad days, good weeks and bad weeks. But as long as you're seeing measurable progress in a reasonable time, this is one of Jim Rohn's favorite sayings, and then you can see that you're heading in the right direction, which is really important. So what is your why? When, when, you, when you set goals, whatever your goals might be, in order to achieve them, you do need a strong reason why. And that's why if somebody else sets your goals for you, if somebody says you need to get to your 10% bonus, and you don't know why, then it's really easy to give up halfway through because what happens is when you're working towards a goal, um, the first thing that happens is you set the goal. And you know, hopefully it's you that set it rather than somebody else, but you set a goal. Maybe you then work out a plan, right? This is what I need to do to achieve that goal. And you start taking those first steps. I'm going to put my catalogs out. I'm going to post some things on Facebook. And then what happens is some obstacles appear. And they always do. That could be grumpy customers at the door. It could be people commenting on your Facebook post with unhelpful suggestions. It could be all sorts of things. But there will always be obstacles. Basically, if you're not having obstacles in your, in your path, in the activity that you're taking, then your goal is not ambitious enough. However, when those obstacles appear, if you've got a strong reason why, that will motivate you to overcome those obstacles. And I believe setting goals which are emotional is really, really important. Rather than having a goal which is, you know, some people set goals which is, right, I'm going to get 250 catalogs out. Now, okay, that, that's a goal. That's, that's a kind of a good goal in a way, but... It's not very emotional. It doesn't feel very exciting to me. What, you know, what does that mean to you, just getting 250 catalogs out? It should be something that's important to you from an emotional point of view. Often, goals based around your family are really powerful goals. So let me just give you a little example. I know some of you will have heard this before. If I put a, a plank of wood, you know, like a builder's plank of wood on the floor and said, right, here's 20 pounds. See if you can walk along that plank without falling off. You'd probably say, oh, easy PG, easiest 20 quid I've ever earned. Get on the plank, walk along it, um, no problem at all. If I then took that same plank of wood, took it to the top of the nearest high skyscraper, block of flats or whatever, um, put it on there and put it in between that block of flats and a nearby block of flats, so all of a sudden you were several hundred feet up in the air, and I said, right, there you go, it's the same plank of wood, here's 20 quid, just go and walk across there. You'd probably say, uh, thanks very much, but no, I, pre I value my life a lot more than £20. So all of a sudden, there's an obstacle in the way. It's a bit higher up. You might be worried, more worried about falling off. However, if your son or daughter, your young daughter, was on the other block of flats at the other side, and there was a fire in the block of flats, and the only way she could escape, there was you know, a big fire, there was no way she could get out other than to come across, back across the plank of wood to you, and she was really scared about doing it. I guarantee you would find a way to get across that plank of wood. You might grab a rope and tie it around your waist and get somebody to hold it or tie it around the wood. Or some way you would go across hands and knees, find, get your daughter and bring her back. So it was the same obstacle, the same plank of wood at the same top of the block of flats. The difference was your reason why was suddenly so powerful that you just found a way to overcome the obstacle. It's exactly the same with this business. You will have obstacles in your way. And if you're doing it and you're thinking, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I don't really mind. Then as soon as you get obstacles, you just won't bother. But if you've got a really powerful family emotion, like, you know, you really want to go on a holiday to Disneyland and you've promised it to your family, so you're really going to make sure you don't want to kind of have to give up on those promises, then that's a really powerful way to create a goal. So once you've decided what are the important things to you and your family, then, you know, and it might just be you, it may not be the family, but whatever goals are really important to you, the next step is how to set those goals. So what I normally start off by saying is think about what would you change in your life right now? Now, it could be that 
every time the post comes through, you've got a letter, you know, you're worried about opening the post because you think there might be a final demand for a bill that you know you haven't paid. Or it could be that you work so hard during the day, you work so hard in the evenings, you've got no time at all to spend with your family. You really want to change what you're doing so that you can build up a, an income to the point where you can have a lot more time in your family. So whatever's important to you, you need to think about that. What would you change in your life right now? And then what I suggest you do is you think about goals in three different ways. So the first is short-term goals, things that you can achieve in the next kind of one to three months. So as an example, it could be that you know you really love to have a new laptop because you're struggling on a, a scatty old um, PC that you've had for 12 years and everything's really slow and you'd love to have a new laptop to be able to run your business or do whatever else you want. Or it could be that you know, all the kids' friends at school have all had, had days out on holidays at Alton Towers and you're just struggling to afford to do that. So you'd love to be able to treat the kids to a, a day at Alton Towers. So those are the sorts of goals that, you know, you could just save up if you're earning an extra 50 or 100 pounds a week. You know, within a month or two, you could afford to do that. So that's a, a great example of some short-term goals. Medium-term goals are things that might take a little bit longer. So, for example, if you'd like to be able to pay off that credit card debt or you're looking to save up for a family holiday in Spain, maybe that would take you 6 to 12 months. Again, think of examples that are important to you that, would be, you, know, that you would really like to be able to, to do with your family, perhaps. And then longer term goals as well. You should also have some longer term goals. And these are goals that could take between a year, maybe five years. So examples for that might be if you're renting at the moment and you'd love to be able to have a deposit to put, save up a deposit to, to put on your own house. Or maybe you just really always wanted that dream car and you'd love to have a brand new Mercedes or whatever it might be. So you might have some long term goals as well. So. Short-term goals are really important because they're things that you can see that success really quickly. Longer-term goals are the really big, exciting ones that will keep you driving on kind of day in, day out. So once you've sat down and you've thought about some goals, short-term, medium-term and long-term, then how do you achieve those first goals? So as I said, whether it's just that laptop or the family holiday or the Mercedes, or maybe you're kind of working towards all three, how do you achieve that? Well, if you think about it, your goal is some kind of change in your life, whatever it might be, the new car or the, the building up the income for the, um, the time with the children, whatever it is. Now, you, you achieve that change in your life by achieving some results. And those results could be maybe lots of orders from your customers. It could just be you know, a big bonus that will help to put a deposit down on a car or pay for the laptop or whatever. It could be extra team members that you're building up in order to build a continuous residual income. Um, but those results um, will only occur if you take some actions. So. Let me just go to try and put that in a little picture for you. Hopefully it'll kind of make a bit more sense. It's the actions that you take which actually result, produce the results will, which will enable you to buy the laptop, pay for the holiday, pay for, put the deposit on the car, whatever it might be. So if, for example, in the short term, we talked about the results that you needed was you'd like to have enough money to buy a new laptop. But maybe the actions that you need to take are... You need to put 200 catalogs out twice a week. Or maybe if you're, you're wanting to do it by building a team, maybe you need to deliver 500 leaflets twice a week. Work with your sponsor to work on what actions do I need to take in order to get the results that will help me achieve my goal. Again, it's exactly the same for the medium term one. You might be looking for a family holiday. So maybe you're thinking, okay, how much would we need to have our dream holiday? 5,000 pounds, something like that, let's say. So maybe the actions that you need to take to achieve that family holiday are to blanket drop until you've got a customer base of 500 customers that you're then delivering to every single month. Or it could be that you need to build a team, you're looking to build a team, and so you, need, you know you need to talk to 10 people every day about the business so that you know that 
given the law of averages, you will get more and more people in your team, which will build up the residual income to allow you to, to pay for that family holiday. Or again, thinking about the long term, it's exactly the same process. How much would it cost you for a new Mercedes? Maybe in order to pay for that, the actions that you need to take are you need to be generating at least 30 leads a week, perhaps. Or maybe if you've already got a team and you want to help that team to develop and become, uh, allow them to achieve their goals, you need to run a little team webinar for your team. Whatever that might be, the actions that you take are the important thing. The results will come if you take those actions. And the beauty of this is you can start off with small actions. You know, the actions could just be put my catalogs out twice a week. So if you've got a little plan, you can start off with small actions that will achieve little results that will give you small goals. And it, as you're achieving more and more goals, that will your business is gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you're achieving bigger and bigger results. And those successes that you're getting every week, every month, every year, get you motivated because if every week you're hitting a small succession it might just be that every week you're thinking yes I've got my 200 catalogs out twice a week I know that if I continue doing these actions I will achieve my goal so you get motivated by that and then every couple of months you bought yourself a laptop maybe the month after that you bought yourself a brand new bike or whatever it is maybe the month after that you've opened up your account towards your um, saving for the new car whatever it might be so every couple of months, you're getting a bigger success. So you feel even more motivated. And then maybe once a year, you achieve a long-term goal, you know, that holiday in Spain or the new car or whatever it might be. And that just gets you seriously motivated. And so all of these successes, weekly successes, monthly successes, big, exciting successes, are constantly improving your attitude. Because if you're constantly achieving success, you just feel so confident that you know this is working, you will never give up. Now, I did say you need to be prepared for a roller coaster because what I've just said is, you know, take these actions and the results will come, which is true. But as I said, it's, it's, people sometimes think that success is just a straight line. Start now, do this, and you will get success. You will always have ups and downs in this business. So what can you expect? Well, as I said earlier, any path without obstacles is probably not leading anywhere worthwhile. So at the beginning, when you start to think about this and you've set some goals, you can get quite excited. You sort of think, oh, that's brilliant. I'm going to do whatever it takes to be successful to achieve those goals. And then you start to get a few obstacles. And that can result in a bit of self-doubt. Maybe you're thinking, oh, God, I don't know. I'm not sure that I can do that. Maybe you get a bit frustrated. Maybe you get a few negative people. Some of you who you thought would be really good in the team and then drops out quickly. And um, you start to doubt that you can do it. And when you're feeling like this, and this is a perfectly normal phase, so don't worry about it. It happens to everyone. And it can happen after a couple of days, a couple of months, a couple of years. But usually the symptoms are you start to stay away from meetings. You, you avoid joining these webinars. You find excuses for not doing things. You start finding faults with the products or the company or your upline. Um, and it's just perfectly normal, don't worry. Because if you've been getting those regular successes, having that good attitude will soon lead you to the fight stage. And what that is, is it basically, it's, it's a realization that actually you're not going to give up. You know that success is just around the corner. And it allows you to focus on your goals, not your obstacles. And what happens then is when you kind of realize that and you go back to attending the events, you start communicating with your sponsor and your upline and your team again, then you're soon back on track. Okay, guys, that's kind of most of what I was going to go through this evening. I just want to uh, ask a quick question, a few, a few quick questions, everybody. For those of you who have been in the business just a few months, can I just ask what are your short-term goals? Has anyone got anything they'd like to share with us? And actually, for the rest of you, those who have been in the business a bit longer, what are your goals for the next few months? Do you have any goals for kind of Christmas and, and the first couple of months of 2017? Anybody got anything they'd like to share with us?
Uh, Hugh, paying off credit card debt, yeah, that's a that's a really good one, really important one. I think paying off debt is so such a a great thing to do, for all sorts of different reasons. That you know you 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 get that the feeling of success for doing it, and financially, obviously your income goes up. So that's a great one. Fantastic, Mark. Yep, yeah. new Merck bungalow. Nice, nice to see that. Elliot, sponsoring at least two new people. So Elliot, can I just ask you? I understand the goal, but from a from a a, a financial point of view or an emotional point of view, what would that mean to you? What, why would that be something that you you and you would want? Gaina, fantastic. So okay, start to build up a bit of money and start creating a new life for yourself. That's great. I, I would say I, I sit down and think about some short-term goals and, and make them a bit more specific rather than just building up some money. Would you like to have five hundred pound savings or a thousand pound savings or something like that? Have a think about that, and then it kind of gives you something to really focus on. Then, if you've got something specific, okay, guys, that's excellent. Anyone got any longer term goals? Any goals for kind of the next six to twelve months, or longer term than that? Yeah, Mark, paying off debt—that's fantastic. Gainer, a car—that'd be brilliant. Residual income, a thousand pounds. Oh, that's certainly achievable, Elliot. I know you've had a good start. You're, you know, with your team, carry on doing what you're doing, mate. You're not going to be far off that soon. Oh, Mallory, fantastic. Holiday in New Orleans. That's brilliant. I really like that. I think the good thing of something like that, thinking about a goal which is a holiday in a specific place, what you can do with that is you can start looking now on the internet. Right? If I wanted to go to New Orleans for two weeks in May, in 2018, whenever it might be, how much would that cost? And maybe that's going to cost £5,000. And you could start working on, okay, £5,000, if I am earning, whatever, £100 a week, that's 50 weeks, I could do that within a year if I save it all up. So it really allows you to focus on what you're looking for. Fantastic. Okay, guys, thank you for that. I'm really pleased to see some really good goals there. That's excellent. Um, my question to you now, though, is, it's all very well setting goals, but are you taking the actions that will inevitably lead to that result? Because you need to think about, where am I now? What do I need to change in order to achieve that goal? And it might be that what you're doing is the right thing. You need to continue doing that. Or it might be that you think, actually, you know what? I need to increase my activity. I need to generate more leads. Or I need to... Um, you know, whatever it is, if you're not sure what actions you need to take in order to achieve your goal, that's what your sponsor and your upline are there for. And I promise you, if you sit down with them and say, can you help me put together a plan to achieve my goal, they will be absolutely delighted because that's what, that's what your sponsor is there for. So make them achieve, make them earn their, their money. Okay, guys, that's pretty much everything I was going to go through this evening. I'm just going to turn off the recording. Bear with me just a second.